Welcome to today's video on skills required to become an embedded developer. Today, I'm going to walk you step by step through what an embedded developer does and most importantly, what skills you need to learn if you want to become an embedded developer. So guys, by the end of the video, you will have a clear roadmap you can follow to get started. Now, before we move on, just a quick info guys. Simply Learn has got e postgraduate program in IC design developed by IIT Bombay's Department of Electrical Engineering. Earn IIT Bombay alumni status. This curriculum is developed and delivered by IIT Bombay faculty. You will experience campus immersion at IIT Bombay and also you are going to earn 36 outreach program credits and diploma from IIT Bombay. So let's get started. So first, let us understand what are embedded systems and who are embedded developers. Embedded systems are basically small computers built into other devices to do specific tasks. For example, like a microchip inside your washing machine that controls the cycle. Or the best example could be the system in your car that manages the engine or airbags. These devices are called embedded because the computing part is hidden inside them. So an embedded developer is a person who writes a software that makes these devices and do their jobs correctly. You can think of it like, suppose if you build apps for phones, you become a mobile developer. If you are building websites, you become a web developer. If you build code that runs inside machines and devices, you are an embedded developer. Now let us try to understand the core skills required to become an embedded developer. So first one, you need to have a solid understanding of C, C++ and peripheral programming. Then you should be aware about embedded Linux or RTOS. Then you should be aware about assembly language, microcontroller and microprocessor. And finally, you should also have a very solid understanding about digital electronics and data sheet reading. Now let's move ahead and discuss what is the exact roadmap to become a embedded developer. So you can see first you need to build foundation like your C, C++. Then you need to get hands on with the microcontroller. After that, you need to master hardware and software integration. Moving ahead, you should also study about version control systems like Git. And uh, then you could move ahead for exploring advanced topics. And finally, you should build an amazing portfolio by doing projects and then you could go for internship. Let us explore each one of them one by one in detailed manner. Now, let us understand what skills you need to build your foundation. So first of all, the most important skill is your C programming. If you want to become an embedded developer, you should absolutely learn the C programming language. Now, you'll be wondering why C? The reason is because C is fast, it gives you precise control over the hardware, and it's been the industry standard for decades. Here's what you should focus on learning C. First of all, pointers. These let you work directly with the memory. Then learn about bitwise operations. For example, turning individual bits on or off. Then memory management. And finally, memory management, which is very, very much important. Learn how to handle RAM very carefully. Don't feel intimidated. Start with small programs like blinking an LED or printing text to the console. You will build confidence step by step. Now, once you are comfortable with C, it is very much helpful to learn C++, especially if you are going to work on a larger or more complex system where object-oriented programming can make code easier to organize. Finally, having a little bit of assembly language knowledge is also a bonus. Assembly is very low level code that talks directly to the processor. You don't need to master it, but understanding how it works will help you when you need to optimize performance or troubleshoot tricky bugs. Now, Let's move ahead to the next part. So next part is understanding microcontrollers and hardware. A microcontroller is basically a small computer on a chip. It has processor, memory, and also it has input output pins so that you can connect to sensors, displays, and other components. As an embedded developer, you will spend a lot of time in writing code that runs on microcontroller. Some popular ones you might start with is like Arduino, 
very beginner friendly and it has a lot of tutorials on YouTube. Next one, you could go for Raspberry Pi, which is affordable and powerful. It's also important to learn how to read data sheets. A data sheet is like a big instruction manual for your microcontroller. It tells you everything about how the pins work, what voltage it needs, and how fast it can run and many more things. So after uh, studying about microcontroller, it's time to move on software and hardware integrations. When I talk about software and hardware integration, it's like working with the RTOs, understanding the peripherals, URT, SPI and I2C protocols, and also understand the debugging tools. Consider this, when your embedded device needs to do multiple things at the same time. For example, like reading sensors, updating the screen and sending data. It often uses something called real-time operating system. So with the help of you can create tasks that run parallel, schedule those tasks that don't interfere, use queues to communicate between tasks safely. Some of the popular RTOs available are like free RTOs, which is open source and very common. So learning RTOs will make you much more employable because many commercial products rely on them to keep everything running smoothly. Then you need to understand the communication protocols. You will need to learn communication protocols like UART, which is a simple serial communication. Think of it like a conversation over two wires. Then there is SPI, which is like a fast data transfer, good for displays and memory chips. Then you have I2C protocol, which is great for connecting multiple devices with just few wires. Don't worry, each of these has a plenty of tutorials on YouTube and also you could go for these courses. So guys, practice plenty of examples to get hands on with these things. Finally, if I talk about debugging tools, you can consider a scenario such that your code doesn't just run on the screen. It is also controlling the real hardware. What if things go wrong? So that's why you need debugging tools. You can go for JTAG and SWT debuggers. These tools let you step through your code line by line when it runs on the chips. Or you could go for oscilloscopes. These will let you see electrical signals in real time. So learning how to debug effectively is one of the most valuable skills you can develop. Using these tools will make your life much more easier. Now let's move ahead and try to understand about version control and build system. Just like in other software jobs, you will need to track your code and work with teammates. That's why it's important to learn Git, which is a version control system. With Git, you can keep a history of all changes, work on features in separate branches, merge everything together safely. Many companies will expect you to know this, so practice using Git as soon as you start doing projects. Then you need to understand the build system, which is very, very much important. And finally, practice code documentation. Now let's move ahead and try to understand what are the advanced topic you need to keep learning. Now. Once you have got the basics down like C programming, microcontroller fundamentals and debugging, there are some advanced topics you can start exploring to really level up your skills. Let's first talk about embedded Linux. Sometimes you will work on devices powerful enough to run on Linux. This is common in things like routers, industrial controllers or advanced IoT devices. Learning embedded Linux involves like how to configure and build the Linux kernel, working with device drivers and many more things. Next up, you have bootloaders and memory management. A bootloader is like a small program that runs when your device powers on. It initializes the hardware and loads your main application code. You will learn how bootloaders work, how firmware's update happen and how to keep the system secure. Next up, you have power management. Especially in battery powered devices, you will need to know how to reduce power consumption. This means learning to put microcontrollers into sleep mode, wake up, interrupts, optimize performance without wasting energy. Then you could go with little bit knowledge about security basics, like as more devices connect to the internet, so security is a big concern all over there. So you could understand about securing boot and firmware verification, then you could learn about encryption of stored and transmitted data and many more things. So these are some of the advanced topic you can consider exploring more after you have covered your fundamentals. So guys, one of the best ways to learn embedded development is to build real projects. 
let's go over some of the ideas that help you get started with. So you can work with LED blinker with button input, which is a simple project where you control an LED with a button press. You will learn the GPIO basics and debouncing techniques. Then similarly, you could make like variable step counter where you use an accelerometer sensor to count steps and display the count. This is also a very basic and amazing project. And finally, you could make a mini drone controller, which is kind of an advanced project. If you want a serious challenge, build a basic controller for a small drone, including motor control and sensor feedback. Now, when you finish the project, document it well. Write it down what you did, share your photos and codes on GitHub, and maybe even make a short video demo. Employers love seeing practical examples of your work. Now let us talk about jobs and internships because they are a fantastic way to get real world experience. Here are some of the tips that I'm gonna give you to get started. First, start early. Don't wait until you are in your final semester. Many companies have summer internships for second and third year students. So you can rely on that. Next one is build a portfolio. When you apply, show them your GitHub projects, photos of your hardware builds, or even a short video where you explain what you made. This proves you are passionate and proactive. Network and reach out. Sometimes internships aren't advertised. Reach out to companies by email, connect on LinkedIn, or attend local tech meetups. Then target the right companies. Look for organizations that work on IoT products, automotive electronics, consumer electronics, or industrial control system. Even small companies or startup can give you amazing hands-on experience and always be ready to learn. During your internship, you might not understand everything right away. That's very much normal. Take notes, ask questions, and soak up as much as you can. And finally, go for certifications and online courses. If you can take online courses to strengthen your resume, it is going to add up a lot of benefit. And finally, keep on learning because embedded systems keep on evolving. So guys, that was all for today's video. I hope so. You had enjoyed our today's video on skill set required to become an embedded developer. Thank you guys for watching this video. Staying ahead in your career requires continuous learning and upskilling. Whether you're a student aiming to learn today's top skills or a working professional looking to advance your career, we've got you covered. Explore our impressive catalog of certification programs in cutting edge domains, including data science, cloud computing, cybersecurity, AI, machine learning, or digital marketing. Designed in collaboration with leading universities and top corporations and delivered by industry experts, choose any of our programs and set yourself on the path to career success. Click the link in the description to know more. Hi there. If you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.